and welcome back to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Durienzo, and we're going to have another great show in store for you today. And my guest, returning yet again, Iana Astinoff, the great poet and performance artist and general uh, pleasant person to be around and a very intelligent uh, and insightful person. Thank you so much for joining us on Let Them Talk, Iana. Paul, thank you very much for having me again. All right, great to have you. And uh, I know you've done a lot of performance, a lot of writing and poetry over on Under the Bridge since, since last year when you were last on. And uh, Absolutely. I was, I was quite busy. Um, I published four books of poetry, um, most of which uh, really came from 2014, 15, 16. However, uh, they all suddenly uh, came out this year. Also, I spent... Oh, they got uh, published this year after writing them for a long period yes, of time. And exactly. then they all come out, well, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right? Yes. Right, I That's see. That's exactly what happened. And also this year, um, I was in London for uh, five months uh, at the poetry residency. And um, I finished another book, uh, Sabloner. Mm. I a have poetry it residency. Where was that again? Uh, in London. In London. Oh, yeah, wow. Poetry That's Factory. Oh, really? Where is that? In London, I guess. But what part of London? Um, it's um, um, it's in in London. It's a secret location, Poetry a Factory. Oh, yes, really? but secret it has location. it has an outlet online. It's three AM magazine. Okay. So it's uh, another project I'm uh, working on at the moment. Um, um, I started a series of interviews with uh, performance artists in uh, New York. Uh, the main reason is uh, because I was working on a photography book uh, about performance art. And uh, after three years, I finally felt it's ready. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, the editor of 3AM um, had an idea to actually do the interviews as well with all the artists and then put it together in a, mm. uh, in a book together with the photographs. So. Um, that's something uh, that I find really, uh, really interesting, and um, sure. it also allows the uh, European audience. Three AM magazine is mainly uh, it's based in Paris and London, so it allows European audience to get to know American artists. And I think yeah. uh, the performance art scene uh, in Europe and the US are quite different. Really? Yes, I think um, I think the American um, performance art scene is more political. Uh, and still, it seems that um, there's just much more happening, really. In the United States, is in chaotic. Look at our present. Yeah. Exactly. That's why it's called states of anxiety right. and, and not something. States of oh. bliss. <laughs> right, 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 right. But well, I think yeah. it's also, uh, it's also um, a particular characteristic of aesthetic of performance mm -hmm. art. Yes. And uh, tell people your country, you, you originally come from Poland, right? Uh, I was born in Poland, yes. Um, my family comes from Russia, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I'm Polish. Uh, is that your language? Or when you're not speaking English, you speak mostly? Um, English is my third language, or fourth. Um, my second language was Esperanto or French. Uh, I speak fluently four languages. I, I, know, uh, I know, I guess, many more. Uh, but uh, I write in English, especially poetry. Uh, because poetry uh, uses the everyday emotion, and that happens for me mm -hmm. in Polish. When I try to write poetry in Polish, it's more uh, abstract, I would say. It's more onomatopoeic. What fascinates me about Polish language uh, is the sound of it, and also mm -hmm. the sort of playfulness in the way you can construct uh, words. Um, I find Slavic languages a little bit more playful and more elastic than mm -hmm. uh, Western languages. Sure. Okay. And I think um, my next collection of poetry, uh, I think it's going to be in Polish, but it, it will be very different as oh well. I see. It, very it's, gonna, it's going to be more exper uh, experimental and uh, onomatopoeic. Have you ever performed in Poland? Um, I, I did perform a lot in Poland when I was a teenager. Um, uh, I did a training with Leszek Mondzik, who is a well-known um, Polish uh, theatre director. And uh, since I was little, I was part of different theatres. And, and then at the age of 16, I had my own theatre and was writing plays and mm -hmm. staging it with my um, school friends. So um, as a teenager, I performed a lot. And oh, I also wrote a lot of poetry. But you haven't been back to perform. Um, I'm actually going back this year. I see, and I see. Uh, my plan, I've got, a, I've got a project I would like mm -hmm. to do in Poland. And it's actually related to, uh, mm -hmm. to poetry and uh, discovering the Polish language as my mother tongue mm -hmm. um, through uh, a cut-up technique, something that I experiment uh, a lot with and something that comes from 
uh, Dada, and it's also something I did uh, recently at the New York Poetry right. Fest uh, Dada is a form of, of almost anarchistic art from the turn of the last century. Uh, yes. Yeah, very I mean, interesting. Yeah, it's been avant-garde for yeah. over Andre 100 Breton, years. Andre Breton, right, and yes. all those kind of things, right. And it's, it's a, it sort of was pre predecessor to Dali and, and the whole idea of, of uh, of uh, you know the art I mean, is uh, Dali and surrealism, surrealism are just different yeah, right, uh, yeah. different type of avant-garde. So I within see. the 20th century, there were a few different currents of avant-garde, and uh, sometimes uh, they merge on the outskirts. And it's actually interesting that we're talking about it because uh, um, I'm going to Castle uh, in a week time with a group of artists from mm -hmm. London. And Castle, so or explain to people what Castle is. Oh, uh, Castle is uh, is this uh, wonderful uh, town in Germany, well known for its uh, incredible uh, uh, art exhibition that happens every five years. So uh, I remember uh, still studying photography uh, as a teenager. Uh, my one of my teachers told me uh, this is this is definitely a place you want to uh, mm -hmm. go one day. And actually, I've never had a chance to uh, visit. And this year, I was invited to uh, participate in a. I would say um, quite Dada events uh, Dada uh, organized by um, uh, friends of mine from London and mm. Psychogeographical Society of London and oh Freestyle really? Football. <laughs> as That's you can interesting. Tell, yes, as you can tell. Everybody's um, in on it now. <laughs> Everybody wants to get in it on the arts, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. But um, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm going there to uh, play freeside football uh, with oh, uh, right. American yeah. yes, with American team that I represent. And you call it three-sided football. Yes, it's three-sided, and it is indeed three-sided three football. Teams there are three one. teams, yeah, okay. but not three uh, balls. Although it sounds like Chinese checkers, we call it. Like, oh, right. In other words, yeah. a, a form of the of the game that's very unusual with multiple sides and not just two people. Right? Uh, it originates from uh, Denmark um, and and the cover movement. Uh, but uh, I'm coming with my own team. It's a real sport. It, it, it started as an art joke, but um, BBC has done documentary about mm -hmm. it and a few other uh, TV stations. So um, Freestyle Football is invited to uh, Castle. What's your, what's your position when you play well, Freestyle Football? Um, is there a position? Previously, yes, previously in London uh, I, was, uh, I was a judge. Um, so... Um, that's what I did before. This time I have my whole uh, team. It's called Atlantis, and uh, it's an American team um, comprising of mermaids uh, who will be uh, will try will try to win by uh, attacking other players with uh, a sort of uh, device that I'm in the middle of creating, uh, and it's also a photography installation. Um, so mm -hmm. I'll okay. be throwing fishnets uh, with different uh, photographs attached to them onto other players. To capture the other players. That's an interesting yes, exactly. game. When will that be come to um, the Olympics? Well, it, it was a secret, but <laughs> I, I just have this, this right. way of opening up to you. When well, you, ask me you did, and you opened it up. It was <laughs> wonderful. All right, well, you know, we have a video. What is the video we're about to see? Um, this is something I was showing uh, last year at Art Basel, uh, took over video and my performance, but we are going to see Art Basel is another, in Basel, Switzerland, famous you uh, know, by uh, this, this one, uh, This one is not in Switzerland. Uh, this was last December in uh, Miami. In Miami. So well, how come it's called Art Basel, which is a city yeah. in Switzerland, but it's in Miami? Uh, it originated in uh, Basel, and now I, I think see. the biggest venue um, mm -hmm. is happening in, in Miami because <laughs> it's, it's a hub for all the American uh, art and a lot of European and Asian, uh, I guess people I from see. all around the world uh, come to sort of right. exchange the, the ideas. And so the this is a video of a, of a performance you did there? Um, this is, uh, actually I did a performance that uh, uh, used video installation as part of the performance. So we are going to see just the uh, video part and it's, uh, uh, it, I'm a multi multidisciplinary artist so I use all, a lot of different uh, different mediums uh, to express uh, whatever you know mm -hmm. I, I, I want to convey and uh, this video is a mix of uh, sort of performance for the camera and um, also poetry um, and uh, I'm turning to uh, Hindu goddess Saraswati uh, with uh, with poetry series. A Hindu goddess you become. Yes, Hindu okay. goddess. Yes. Right, let's watch it now. <laughs> let's, let's see you as with a Hindu poetry goddess. poetry series called You're Already Man a goddess, Sound. let's see you as a Hindu goddess. Go ahead. Soft purple glow of some dreamless day. 
of bodies and eternal comments of love. Soft purple glow of our sex on the waves of some serpentine desire for eternal comments. Hungry for a man. Is there a set length or are we just telling one? The taste of origins like waves and silence. First for the absolute. Between goddess like heights, her tights, her lips. As if desire could collide. This one time. With the tip of his tongue. I know little about that man. His half-naked body trans me music. <laughs> and now for the heart to charm, I found him, I know him, someone. With manners better than mine. Spreading stars. More down to earth. Spreading, spreading and rocks from the future. <laughs> or at least uh, not some the world. Yes, yes. No. <laughs> yeah. So I know. <laughs> and lift one note from the mystery. Spreading, mm -hmm. of spreading beyond that night, I could have been slightly man. less of rocks. Oh well, from the beach. Beyond that, spreading stars I could and rocks from the future. If I wrapped all that was great. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, that was only part one. It was Goddess Saraswati. I uh, impersonated. Um, um, all the Hindu goddesses that I feel really close to. So there was also uh, Lalita, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, always represented by red. Saraswati sure. is the white goddess, mm -hmm. the goddess of arts, uh, right. inspiration. Uh, but uh, technology as well. Um, I was also Kali, uh, blue Kali, the goddess of uh, destruction. Um, and as well as Durga, um, uh, and probably a few more goddesses. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. That's wonderful. I mean, like, so I'm still blown away. So tell me about the poetry you've been writing. Um, uh, give us an example <laughs> of your poetry, because you are poetic. You're poetry in motion. So let's. I want to hear more of your poetry. Um, right. So this is uh, this is my latest book uh, mm -hmm. called Sublunar. Yeah. Uh, the title comes uh, from one of the uh, mm -hmm. one of the poems uh, written in Portugal, mm -hmm. uh, Sublunar Tide. Um, there are so many, really. Uh, this collection is quite philosophical. So it starts with uh, Blosfeld's argument. Mm -hmm. Blosfeld was a German photographer from the beginning of the 20th century. But uh, it's an argument between Blosfeld and um, uh, Soren Kierkegaard. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also ends with uh, with philosophical poem uh, uh, talking about uh, Cartesius. Uh, so there is a lot of Descartes. Oh, de okay, Descartes. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Um, in which I'm uh, arguing with his philosophy, and I think the first poem al already gives this uh, idea. Are you a philosopher? Do you study philosophy? Uh, yeah, I study philosophy in France. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. 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 So it's quite natural inclination for me to write about uh, philosophy, but also I think a lot of times. Uh, this book is more philosophical, but it also touches on uh, mm -hmm. quite intense, dark well, emotions. Mm -hmm. Let's just hold it up for folks to see. That. So where, where can I, is this something you can get on like iTunes or uh, Amazon? Um, or this one. Or uh, you have to go to one of your performances? Uh, you can come to one of my performances. That's it's the best place. It's also available on Amazon, and it's available on my, uh, on my website. Right. Uh, and right, and we're, pr we're, we're putting your website up, and we'll we'll put it up again the uh, the website where people can get in touch with you, uh, Yana Astanov. So this is sublunar. So this is a, a discussion between great philosophers uh, and myself and yourself, um, great. and and um, a lot of female archetypes. So there is an archetype of uh, Penelope, an archetype of wife, which uh, actually mm -hmm. that's the second part. Uh, actually, it was a conversation I was. Uh, 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 I was having with uh, uh, with Amer American philosopher Peter Ladlow. We were exchanging emails, and I was commenting on a book he wrote. Uh, and uh, at some point, it felt that it needs to be turned into a poetry series. So, 
uh, it was a conversation with a philosopher that turned into poetry. Right. Um, uh, there is also um, there is third part uh, dedicated uh, dedicated to uh, my partner Nico, and that's quite perceptive and written uh, in Portugal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, really largely inspired by mm -hmm. uh, nature. And Is there one you'd like to read for us? Uh, absolutely. Um, perhaps, therefore I am. Grace with perceptions, the sunset at the Greenwich Park beyond the witch's circle and the moon approaching its bloom jagged surface of an old oak tree leading me towards if I bite at the right angle I'll turn into a wild cat descending with poise presently I'm still a woman illimitable sensory argument on a waxing moon demurk asking what if the knowledge and the history were plagued with evil epistemology of the Anthropocene kind with all the thoughtful eyes all illusory colonial imperial rationalistic disembodied dead white heterosexual males with their servant Gus and Descartes weeping over the body of his daughter niece would you rather be a servant girl than a slave girl? Mm -hmm. What not to be proud of if you have no choice? So it's, uh, you have to know a little bit more about uh, uh, Descartes' life. Yeah. Um, he, he was the guy who, who said, um, I think therefore I am. Uh, uh, and there is an allusion to, to his personal life. He had a daughter. Uh, with uh, his servant, who he never called a daughter but niece. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is a conversation with his philosophy, uh, which was uh, driven by uh, mm -hmm. by the mind and the perception that really affected his life. Right. Well, okay, very interesting. So th that's a, a little bit of philosophy in your poem. Uh, when um, w so th this book is recently just recently released, although you wrote it some time ago, right? Um, this book, uh, actually, everything here, um, the eighty pages, uh, I wrote this year, mm -hmm. so right. uh, it's it's all fresh and um, right. it was published in June. Right. Are you performing soon? Will we see? What are you going to be performing next? Uh, I was just performing last weekend at the poetry yeah. uh, festival uh, uh, at Governors Island. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm sorry we couldn't get people to go to that by having it beforehand. There were so many people. Yeah, it was already packed, right? And yeah. people go out there to beautiful Governors Island. Absolutely. And every year in the end of July, there's a, uh, a poetry festival there, yeah. which is very, and a lot uh, of our friends are there. That's sort of right. how we met through the same friends. Well, uh, I'm, I'm traveling to Europe. Uh, I have uh, a little European tour. I'm going to Amsterdam, London, uh, Kassel, mm -hmm. and then Poland. So I'll be back uh, in the US in September. Okay. Uh, most likely, I'll be publishing my next poetry book because now it's mm -hmm. been three months. So I've collected right. uh, enough material. It's called uh, The Pillow Book of Berg. Right. And um, those are all the stories about New York and, right. and, and Williamsburg. Okay. And it's the concept is based on um, uh, a Japanese uh, form of writing that uh, mm -hmm. evolved uh, during medieval time uh, medieval times in Japan. Sure. Uh, pillow book. A so pillow it's a book. collection a okay. uh, collection of poetry, essays, uh, and different types of writing in right. one book. Great, great. Now that's not the only book. Uh, you also have some photographs. Can we jump to the photographs and just see what some of your photographs are? I want to uh, make sure we have enough time to show them. Yeah, those photographs. Uh, I will be using them as part of my installation for Castle. So uh, they are from my performance. Uh, uh, two or three years ago uh, at Art Basel, uh, The Art of Saving the Arctic, uh -huh. where I turn into an Arctic. I sometimes perform as Arctic Ocean. Um, and those photographs, they will be attached to fishnets, and, and uh, it's going to be a whole mixed right. media Right. Mixed media Global set. warming is uh, becoming yeah, part of art. Absolutely, absolutely. I write, uh, even in my poetry, I write a lot about it. Uh, I think we the should. Potential end of the world. Um, I think human race is much smarter than that. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there are solutions to, to help uh, to slow down the global warming, of course. Uh, it's just we need to have uh, a little bit smarter and a more forward thinking uh, political class. Um, so here are some of the photographs that uh, okay. will be part of the installation. Sure, maybe we can get a zoom in on this a little bit and 
See if we can see it closer to the. This is uh, uh, this is a performance, the art of saving the Arctic, where right. uh, I I became uh, the Arctic in this. Right. Oh wow! You sort become the Arctic Ocean in a way. Yeah. Uh, painful uh, movement dance through the mm -hmm. gallery filled right. with ice. Right. Um, well, okay. All right. And then here's some more. Any more? Any others you'd like us to see? Yeah, it'd be great. Beautiful. Wow, what are you painting? You're painting yourself with oil, or is it looks like something like that? Uh, it's body paint. Body paint. This yeah. time, this time it was body paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't oil. Uh, but um, obviously, right. throughout this whole movement, the body Omar. paint uh, okay, came great. off, and uh, mm -hmm. at the end, you can see me um, mm -hmm. on the floor of the gallery with uh, with a sign, uh, "Save the Arctic." Mm -hmm. I think as artists, we uh, Right. You know, we can uh, we can convey important messages and and we can talk about things that really mm -hmm. right. matter. Um, yes. So my other poetry book, sure. uh, I mentioned that Sablonar is uh, philosophical. Uh, grimoire is more metaphysical, mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of uh, mythology and magic uh, mm -hmm. in in this collection, and also uh, a lot of uh, poetry that refers to to mm -hmm. nature and. Sure. The, um, um, the current uh, mm -hmm. climate uh, uh, climate emergency. Um, so I'm not sure if we've got any time left. Do we? Yeah, we have about uh, six minutes, seven minutes. Um, so if I may, uh, I've got a series um, in uh, grimoire called "Lost Psalms of Destruction." Mm -hmm. um, she Universe Twenty First Century. Sure. Um, and it talks about oceans. Also, uh, part of this, uh, the I think there are eight psalms here, um, and some of it uh, has been written using um, mm -hmm. uh, a cut-up technique. So I use uh, 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 verses from uh, different female uh, poetesses from um, 19th and 20th okay. century, mainly, but also sure. also Sappho. Sure. I was lying on the floor at the bottom of the ocean, at the bottom of the desert covered by millennial sand, I lay empty. And the following. We are, I am, you are, the one who find our way from half destroyed minds of blindness back to this scene, to our own goddess, on her birthday and the birth of the world, I begin to contemplate water itself is not enough. I read from the lost Psalms. Masters of civilization, your rhetoric bends reason. Here you possess me. My devotion was for nothing. You wanted eternity, chasing the rapist dream for more. My eyes? And as I approach what judges me, I judge myself. Overexposed, each of you wanted me for your own empire until there was nothing left. You would think hollow phantom, erasable. Now, your royal starships departing towards my darkness. Great, thank you. All right, Jana Astinov, Jana Astinov, uh, poetess from the Lower East Side and from Brooklyn, and I met you <laughs> in Governor's Island, Poland, France, you name it, you're all over the world, <laughs> and uh, reading her poetry. Now I notice we have a few minutes left that you have brought some of your masks over there. I was wondering if you were had a minute oh. to show us them. <laughs> There's just we have a couple well, minutes left. Uh, that was a uh, that was an idea uh, for the performance. I wanted to, I wanted to help you to create some of the poetry, okay. uh, which is w uh, something I've done at Governors Island. Uh, so I always create different uh, personalities. And uh, last weekend I turned into Red Goddess. Okay. Um, Red Goddess of poetry. Uh, so here here is uh, one of my shamanic Beautiful. masks. And uh, I was doing um, 
Mm -hmm. I was creating, helping people to create star poetry, sure. which is uh, a divination technique that uh, mm -hmm. I invented. Okay. Would you like to try it? Yes, sure. <laughs> How do I try it? <laughs> we have two minutes left. What we got three minutes. What can well, I do? if we've got a few minutes left, then maybe I could read something. Okay. So uh, this is Naked Poetry Dive, which is an anthology of female poetry. Um, and also performance based. It's something that me and my girlfriends did uh, mm -hmm. in 2014. Yeah. And just now I um, put together the collection of our poetry. Um, so the Naked Poetry Dive, uh, it's a line from uh, the title, of, from a poem called Baudelaire's Bag. Naked Poetry Dive, promise of pleasure. Naked soul, dead soul, ancient. Illusion, walking down the melting palace, romantic spleen on the rotten petals. Like a bag, Baudelaire is back when he, she was. So if you, if you were it wondering where the title is coming from, Beautiful. Naked Poetry Dive. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. And it was also um, winter solstice performance. A mm -hmm. lot of my performances are always uh, happening around uh, 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 those, uh, those important times of what transition. Now we have a few more minutes, but coming up is, a, is the eclipse that's going to be going crossing America. Absolutely, uh, the, the Great American uh, Eclipse. Uh, August I've, uh, 21st. Uh, yes, I, I'm also astrologer, so uh, I'm fascinated by uh, astrology and eclipses as well. Um, and this one, um, this one, it's mm -hmm. quite particular. It actually yeah. started on the 15th of May. So if mm -hmm. you come back and think what you were, uh, if something started happening in your life on 15th of May, those changes uh, keep on going. And uh, they will be, uh, uh, they will continue till next year, mm -hmm. uh, January and, and February. And as well, yesterday we had partial uh, eclipse, lunar eclipse during uh, full moon as well. Um, Which we could have seen it. It was so <laughs> cloudy, and it was happening during the day anyway. But it was great. Well, we saw it on Sunday. You saw, you saw it on Sunday. You could see part of it at night. Um, oh, absolutely. at the at the part. I didn't yes. notice it. It was yes, you could yes. see it. Okay. We we've met at the uh, at the full moon uh, the full ritual moon, right, in right. Uh, La Plaza Community Garden. Right. It was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, we saw I saw the moon rise over the East River. It was beautiful to see it. I think it's important to to celebrate uh, celebrate the Earth and the transitions and our connection as community to to the mm -hmm. planet. We live on. Right. All right, Jana Astinoff, thank you for joining us on Let Them Talk. And uh, uh, when you come back from Europe, we'll have Jan again and we'll talk more about Absolutely. your work. Absolutely. I would love that. Thank you Great. so very much. Thank you.